Hey friends, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here. Today we're going to talk about fencing. And I'm not talking about sword fights. Nope. I'd, nope. Ta I'd take you. Probably would. I don't know. <laughs> hey, my mama taught me not to hit a girl. Yeah, well then I'd take you. <laughs> you can take me anywhere, dear. Yes. So anyway, we've had some folks ask about the fencing that we've been doing, and I know there's a lot of new people out there that are just getting into homesteading. It's like, I want animals, but where do I start? Because I've got this property, and there is fence, or there isn't fence, and I'm just not sure where to start. So we'll kind of start at our beginning, and that's why you see the fence behind us. Well, we before we start, just want to say thank you to everyone yes. Um, who has given us well wishes and the very, very kind words. Uh, we yeah. absolutely have the best subscribers on YouTube, so thank yeah. you so much for your well wishes um, and your extremely kind words. Yeah. About Decker, that yes. is. Yeah. But he will be missed. Yes. He was, he was one of the more well-behaved dogs. <laughs> yes, very calm. He was. But he, he was, was almost 14, so yeah. he was an old man. He was, he was. Best life ever. Yes. Anyway. Okay, so the fencing. Start out with Premier One fencing, and I'll tell you, it's a pain in the rump. We we have a love <laughs> we have a love hate relationship with the Premier One. It's actually great because it allowed it us to get animals before we had our perimeter fencing done, yep. and allowed us to move them. And just gave us options before we got the permanent fencing in. So in that case, the premier one is a blessing. Yep. And it, and it allowed us to learn. It was, it allowed us make, to make mistakes. Yes. Without a lot of consequences. Yes. <laughs> but, and it, you know, it's great to have now because we can put it around the chickens and the ducks. Fabio yep. is in a premier one netting right now because we don't want he's, him in with the girls yet. He's the lamb ram. Yeah. No, he's not a lamb. Well, He's our ram. He, he's the sheep ram. He's 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 over he's, a year. He, he's a year he's and a, a half old. All right. He's a sheep. He is a ram. He is not a goat, or a bull, or a calf, or a duck, yes. or anything like that. He is our ram for the sheep. Yes. And so <laughs> he's still in one, and so it gave us that that flexibility yes however we have rocky soil we're in the mountains and the feet don't like to go in with rock and so you know mm -hmm. it it created some issues there and um it likes to tangle so mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, love it's, hate it's, relationship well, it's, uh, let's see if i can show them right quick since it's <clears throat> that's a step-in post that's a different story Okay, so it's a, a two-pronged post, and these bend and they twist when you hit rocks. And then when you are trying to move this, the whole fence, these get caught on each other. So now you've got, you've got your fence netting inside of this, and you're trying to straighten it out to put it up in the next spot. It's tricky. It's easier with two people, but even then, it, it, it loves itself a lot. Anyway, so that's... That's where we started. We started with Premier One fencing, and then we started working on our perimeter fence. It has an extra layer of security, and it's electrified. But I did want to mention before we get out of this spot, right behind you, it's got blooms on it. Oh, the comfrey, our yes. Our comfrey. Imagine that, planted next to our mulberry trees. Yes. And by the way, it is available. Roots it are available, available on our on our website. Yes. It has come up enough. So. Yes. Anyway, so... Let's go on over here and we'll show you what we started with on the perimeter fencing and then we'll break down the, the paddocks from there. Mwah. Not supposed to talk with your mouth full. Are you following me? Are you 
following me. <laughs> All right, so we're over here on our perimeter fence, and we used four wire, four lines of wire, and this is bare wire, 14 gauge, 12, might even be 12 I think gauge. It was 12, it was this, 12 gauge. This was heavy stuff, and we got, we did it, used a spinning jenny on the back of the four wheeler to run this stuff because those spools are super heavy. Yeah, it's 12 gauge, I'm sure. Yeah, but. Yeah, you see the yellow things, that's the, the insulator so that it doesn't ground out on the posts. Um, now we were told that you should put a wooden post every like four T posts for um, strength. Well, we didn't quite meet that, that measure, that, that number, but this is solid. We haven't had any issues, you know, knock on wood. Um, but you see we've got the T post. That's the perimeter fence. This is heavier gauge. And it zaps them good if they it, try to go it, through. They it, never actually go through the, yeah, the, the perimeter. Per, yeah, the perimeter fence, we've not had any challenge. But that said, the other lines, it's been some challenge. So let's take them over and show them that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, once we had our perimeter fence set up, that's when we started using the uh, some more of the netting to do our rotational grazing because we didn't know exactly how did we want these paddocks set up. You know, we're still... Well, and, and I guess to even go back further, Yeah. so a lot of people, like Greg Judy, when he moves his animals, he will just use one line of poly wire, which works really well for his cattle. Our cows, that works great, and not so much our sheep, and we have goats. Greg Judy doesn't have goats, so that can be a little challenging, but that said, because this is our homestead and we are always here, we wanted to get paddocks set up so we could easily just open one paddock, open them up into another, and not have to worry about always running a line around. So that's why we chose to do permanent paddocks, and we can adjust based on how much forage is in. Do we want to leave them in half a day, a day, two days? There are some areas that are large enough that sometimes we can get away with three. Just all depends on the time of year. And as your forage gets better, as your soil improves, then they're actually, it creates more forage, um, so there's more food for the animals. So as it improves, more food. More food, more fertilizer. Exactly. It's so, but that's, yeah, so that's why we chose to do permanent paddocks um, because, well, because of the goats and because we just wanted a real easy, open, let them through. Right. Make our lives as easy as possible, exactly. but still, still the benefits of rotational grazing. Exactly. So when we did this, we originally did step-in posts. You saw the blue post I showed you earlier. We'll show you another one again. But we did those, you know, we kind of, you know, stood up there. <laughs> how many times we stand up there and say, okay, you know, this is how we want to, want to do this. And we want to move them from here to here to here, across the road, because we wanted to move them down to below the house too, and then back up and around. We were just trying to get the flow in our head. So then we used the step-in posts and we ran four lines of poly wire. Mm -hmm. There's also poly rope, and we'll show you the difference, but four lines of poly wire. For some of them, that was fine. Others, they decided that once they were in a, in a paddock for a half a day and the grass was eaten down a little bit, oh, that look good. looks good on the other grass side. Grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> Quite literally, and oh, they'd go through. They would get shocked and we, you know, we'd get them back in and, you know, we kind of toiled with that and it's like, okay, well. Well, we had to adjust and figure out how big do we want the paddocks? Right. Um, how, what shape do we want the paddocks? So we want, we needed that temporary to begin with so we could right. really envision how everything was going to work. Well, and yeah. see how it was going to work. Yeah. And, and <laughs> we have a lot of step in posts because you can't space them quite as wide as this. So. You know, to make those paddocks, you, anyway, we've got a lot of step in post. We got it all laid out and the flow started really, really kind of working. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, all right, this is good. But we still had that problem with them kind of getting out and, and you know. Oh, and the step in post didn't look as nice either. Well, no. no I'm a girl. I want things to look nice. Well, <laughs> right. But again, it allowed us that flexibility to learn. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we're sharing this video. We, you know, this might run a little bit long and, and hopefully it's not boring, but this is, I mean, 
if you're homesteading, this is important stuff. Or I mean, wanting to homestead and get livestock because the most important thing, you have to keep your livestock on your property. There are some states, many states, that if your livestock gets out, and a car hits them um, or they end up on a neighbor's a neighbor's property, you are responsible for the damage that they do. So <laughs> which which reminds me, while we were waiting for Decker, waiting for the doctor's results, I got a call from our neighbor and he's like, Hey, do you have a black cow with a white face? I'm like, No, it's not ours. He's like, Oh, well, there's one walking down the road. I'm like, we'll turn her back our way. We'll take <laughs> we'll take care of her. We have too many cows as it is. Yeah, but anyway, so Yes, yeah, so then we graduated for once we had our paddock set up the way we thought we wanted them. We got we've adjusted since again. <laughs> yeah, we have, but we went and bought a bunch of step in posts or T -posts, posts. And Denise has been pounding away, so you don't want to arm wrestle with her. She'll <laughs> Yeah. She'll she'll Mike Tyson your arm. <laughs> You're right. Without the ear bite. So now why do we choose T posts over timeless fence posts? Greg Judy mm -hmm. hates the metal T posts with electric fence, and I get it because if it does come off of these, um, it hits the metal and it will short the I, fence out. Now I, I can show you right here. If if a deer were to run through and hit this, it can come unhooked because it just unhooks that easy. So now this is just flopping up and hitting and grounding out on that metal. That's but why Greg the good Judy news is, if this is tight enough, you you won't have that. No, issue. no, this it. They're snug. It's, those lines are tight. But anyway, so the step in or the timeless, timeless post. We were actually working with the timeless fence post to actually get the timeless fence post over the T post. Uh, I know that they last a long time. Um, like they've got UV protectant. Like yeah, and they're they don't have metal. However, we're in the mountains, and I spoke with them, and he's like, "Oh no, you'll need to get some kind of special equipment to to get those pounded in in a in rocky soil." And we've got a lot of area that's really rocky, especially along the creeks. And we've got two, two creeks basically on either side of our pasture. So we, it was not going to be number one cost effective to do that, but there was no way we could spend that time yeah. um, putting the timeless fence posts in these. We were able to just get into the ground with a, a T post pounder. And if there was a little bit of a rock, we were able to adjust it. You can't do that with T posts in rocky ground. And if you've got really hard ground, and I don't know if you've all seen Greg Judy's trying to help in Tucson um, with some of the flooding issues by putting cattle on there and kind of healing the land out there. Well, they had to get a special truck that pushed water down in so they could get the, the timeless fence so posts a, in. A water hammer. They were, yeah, they were actually was, dr yeah. drilling with, with water pressure, drilling the hole first to, to put get those it timeless in. posts in. So for us, Rocky, it, it doesn't work. and. We were putting pasture in the silvo pasture and we're up on a mountaintop and it just, with all the equipment we were going to need, it just was not going to work. No. So, so that's why we chose the metal T-posts over the timeless fence posts. Well, and even these. Metal, timeless fence posts are great, just just not in our situation. Yeah. And even the T-posts, when we're driving the pounder in there and you hit a rock, I think the, the, the pounder will actually bounce back off and you can just, you can hear it and it's like, not even worth trying to pound through it. So you just move it over a foot one way or the other and, and try it again. But, yeah, but it, you, timeless fence, but these can get through some smaller rocks. The timeless, yeah. He, yeah, well, he even said it, he, we would need special equipment for rocky soil. Yeah. And we're not saying it's not a good product, uh, depending on where you live and great what you're product, doing. Great yeah. product. Yeah. And, and I wish we could have used and it. It's, and it's got pre-drilled holes. So you don't have the aggravation of, of doing the, uh, the insulators, yes. but there's drawbacks to that too. And you can go research that with Greg Judy's videos, but yes. So, we got our paddocks all put up, and we rotated them through several times now. And even after that, we decided, you know what? The paddock up above us, it was too small. It was splitting in half, so we went ahead and took the line down out of the middle. The same thing on that one too. Yeah, where the beehives used to be, and and on up. So, we we've adjusted again. But the latest adjustment, shall we? And take the one it? that's been working really well. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take you up here just a little further. We know you all tune in to see the animals, not us, so we figure we better get up here and show you. <laughs> You'll have to pardon our manginess. Rosemary, she's uh, working on losing her winter coat. She just looks... She's uh, losing her winter coat, it happens. She... Okay, coming back from that edit that she just did on us. The poly wire is what we went around with. 
Well, actually, let's step back to the poly rope. You, you'll see the difference in there. It's a lot thicker, but if Denny's can quit playing with the animals, when you're trying to get the poly rope tied into a loop onto these uh, insulators, it doesn't it doesn't do real well. It's it's kind of a pain. So we started using more of the poly wire, which is great. It, what it is is it's just it's a poly rope, and it's got five strands of of thin wire wrapped through it, and that's what carries your current. So it's all electrified. But um, I wouldn't say the poly wire is great. I hate great. the poly. I'm going to be yeah. honest. I hate the poly wire. Well, I hate it. Yeah, we like it better than the poly rope, just because it's easier to handle. Yes, but the poly rope doesn't tangle. The poly rope doesn't tangle, and when the animals hit it, if they're scared or excited or whatever, they don't break it. And we have had the sheep go through and break the poly wire. And then that's a whole nother problem yes. to deal with. But we started off with poly wire and poly rope. Now we had some issues finding the poly wire. That's why that's, we ended up getting poly rope. And I like poly rope from the standpoint that it, animals can see it easier. Um, it's stronger and it does not tangle. The poly wire tangles like crazy on itself. You can just take it off the fence and set it down with another poly wire and it will find each other. It will absolutely find, and yeah. it's a tangled mess, so. Well, and, and you're probably thinking, well, why would you take it off the fence? That is how we make our gates. This, well, I'm standing in front of a gate right here. And that's why yeah, I was talking. Go lay down, go lay down. <laughs> Come on, I called you in, there you go, there you go. So when we want to move them or we need to get in there, this is our gate. It's just a loop tied in the end of each of these wires and hooked onto the insulator and another, another thing for you and I did a short video on this uh, we we're having problems with the current because now we've just got two two loops kind of sandwiched together so it wasn't necessarily making a good connection so we started running a thin line of uh, wire around the insulator so now there's more uh, connectivity connectivity conductivity conduct it uh, conducts the electricity better I think that it's way. conductivity yeah I Something I'm like not that. an electrician yeah I uh, Dwight will correct us on that. Well, or Billy. <laughs> or Billy. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But so that that seemed to solve the you know getting getting the current. We have a tester, and we come out here periodically and test and see because every now and again the animals will decide. Well, I'm going through. Going back to Greg Judy, he would say, Well, if you've got a sheep that's going through that, call them. And we're going to. Spotify is is destined for the freezer. However, she is just now weaning her babies off so we're not going to take the mama away from the we, babies. We need a few more weeks of the, the weaning yeah. um, before she is processed but she was getting out and then she was leading other people through so because we had the poly wire down below poly wire and poly rope. We had, we had four then we went to five. Yes but we made an adjustment and we have had zero issues for several I mean it's been what about six weeks we haven't had one issue yeah. I don't think. Yes. Yes. Because they're listening. So. What, so if you can't, we'll, we'll bring you over closer. But so we had the five lines of poly wire along here. They were breaking it. They were getting through it. And if they push against it, it will stretch. So then it was sagging. And then they see that gap, that little sag in there. And away they go. That's the other thing I don't like about poly wire. Yeah. It, it sags. It stretches. It stretches really bad. Yep. And you could just go through this, uh, well, not the rope, but the wire, and it will stretch. So that's yep. why I don't like the poly wire at all. I really don't. Right. So, well, before we get to, well, no, we'll talk about that adjustment. So what we did, well, what Denise did, she went through and we got some 14, I, I think this is 14 gauge wire, straight, you know, bare wire, and replaced the poly rope, or the poly, replaced the poly wire with plain 14 gauge wire on the bottom two rows. It doesn't stretch, it's nice and tight, it conducts, conducts the electricity really well, and like she said, it's been a number of weeks now that nobody's gotten out. Not a problem, and they've hit this and poof. Yep. So, and for whatever reason, when we put the, the wire and we did it on the bottom two lines, cows are never a problem. It was, it was really the sheep we had more than the goats. Yeah. But when we did that, our fence went from what, 6.5, I think, up to eight, over eight. Right. Once we put in the, the two wires at the bottom. So we've had zero issues since we've done that. We had to go down through all the paddocks and do it. 
but that adjustment saved us. So what we have here is um, basically three lines. It's most of it's poly wire, but we did use some poly ropes. We weren't going to spend any more money. Yeah. And uh, and then the bottom two lines are wire, and they uh, we've seen them get tagged on it and. Yeah. yeah. It, when you've it, seen an animal get, it sounds cruel, but when an animal keeps getting out and then they get hit really yeah. hard, there's something satisfying about states. Yeah, that, keep that, keeping that them little, in. That little yip. It's like, <laughs> yes. it's kind of like, but you're probably asking, well, what's this little wire going here? Well, because this is a gate and we were having problems with that, you know, that charge going through. We tied, we just ran a, a, a separate short piece of line, tied it to the top wrapped it around each of the lines just to make sure there was a good current, a good consistent current from top to bottom, all the way we did it on both sides of the gates. And no it's, issues. Helped. It's, it's helped a lot. It has helped a lot. So so this is why they're, they're in. So this is considered paddock number one. They just right. got moved back up here yesterday. And then tomorrow they'll head back into our next paddock. That paddock is larger, so depending on weather and forage, they might be there for two and a half, three days. So, yeah. and we're hitting our spring flush, even though we were at 80 the other day and tonight we're freezing. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> it'll stop a little bit of the grass, but we're starting to hit that spring flush, thankfully. Meanwhile, in Phoenix, Phoenix it's 98 degrees. Ugh, yuck. Don't miss yuck. it. <laughs> no. All right, you might have noticed um, our buck, uh, Euchre. Um, limping a little bit. He's had some foot issues. Um, he's got some arthritis. He's a little bit older than we thought. We have found some natural remedies that are working. Um, so we'll be discussing that in a future video. Um, we're having to just give him some natural things about once a month, but we'll discuss that soon. Okay, and since we're talking about paddocks, we wanted to bring you down. This is the one that had that scald, that it was just bare clay that the former owner said nothing will ever grow there. And after just a couple of years of rotating animals through it and putting down hay, I mean, yeah, you can kind of see between, but if you look, I mean, there is all kinds of pioneer species. We've got grasses. We've got clover, uh, we've got dandelions coming up. I mean, let me take you down here. That bald spot, this whole area looked just like that. There was just nothing growing on it. Now it's coming up nice and green, recovering between rotations. You can still wow, see- Wow, we, we did not seed. This is all from animals and, and hay. Yeah, yeah no, no seed was thrown on this. This was just what the seed that came in on that hay and Still has a little recovery to do, but how much better is that from when we started? All right, so that's a wrap on our fences and the evolution of how we got to where we are. Or, and, or the and, escapades. <laughs> or the escapades. It's working. We don't have any neighbors calling saying, hey, your, kid, your cow is heading down the, the road. But uh, our cows are great. It's the, it was the sheep that were great. it was Spotify, but Spotify's yeah. yeah, she's destined for the freezer soon. Yeah, yeah wean those babies and yeah, yeah. But um, now, mountain readiness is in two weeks. It's coming up, wow. coming up very quick. We will be out there. Uh, we have talked to the organizer of that, and he is going to be posting for us. We are going to be giving away two rabbits, a breeding pair of silver fox meat rabbits um, with a $10 donation to the GEM Foundation to further our, our work with, with the kids that are struggling with mental health issues um, and everything that goes about that. But that will be at the event. Um, if yep. you are there. Uh, Stop by the booth, you donate $10 and you will be um, placed into a raffle um, to win the breeding pair. They will be with us, yep. so they you can take home them home. You. <laughs> yes. So Saturday evening, um, we will be leaving. So it's a three-day event: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're only going to be there Friday, Saturday. We'll be heading home Saturday night, but Saturday evening we will announce the winner. And if you are the lucky winner, you will be able to take home a breeding pair of meat rabbits uh so wanted to let you know about that exciting giveaway yep. so if you plan on attending stop by our booth and we'll give you all the details there 
That's right. We'll be there with Comfrey Root and Hori Hori Knives. And Comfrey Plantain Sav. And yep. And if you can't we might make... have some, We might be able to do some willow root and hormone. I'm not sure. The willow tree's just coming out, so... We'll see. We'll, we'll see. If we can, we will. Yes. But, uh, and if you're not able to make it, those items are available on our website, RenewedHomestead.com. Absolutely. And we do still have, uh, we do have meat rabbits available. So if you don't want to enter and you want to buy them and you're in the Western North Carolina area, um, you can email us. The information is in the description and uh, we can talk about buying some meat rabbits too. Yep. And if you would just like to support the Gem Foundation, you can learn more about that at thejemfoundation.com. That is our charity and and our other passion besides Farming. all of this. Yes. <laughs> so. So, anyway. All right. Well. Oh, and think, the, yes. we'll, we'll take you along soon. Uh, the grass is coming in really well along the road. So we will be putting in the fencing for the paddocks and the silvo pasture soon. So we'll take you along when we do that. Whew, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. <laughs> it's always something going on. And that's a good thing. I'd rather wear, I would rather wear out than rust out. There you go. But again, thank you for all your, your well wishes about Decker. You know, we're, we're going to miss him. But uh, you know, we appreciate your thoughts and your prayers. We really do. It's, uh, it's appreciated. It is. It's appreciated. And we got Belle and Loki and Katie. We got a lot of dogs. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of cats. If you need a good, friendly barn cat, we've got extras if you're in the Western North Carolina region. We would be happy for you to take <laughs> one or two or three. Home. Four, five. All right, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. God bless. Hit that thumbs up button for us. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, Make it so.